Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I uh, hope you've been enjoying the videos up till now. Please like, please subscribe, please comment as always. Um, I thought today's video, albeit it might be a briefer one, I thought I'd talk about why you should always deal in honesty. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! And that sounds like a very preachy, very utopic, idealistic viewpoint, but I think it's such a salient point for in life and in business. So I thought I'd back that example up with tangible, tangible examples. In one of the companies that I've mentioned previously, in Live Company, where we sell models, trails that go around city centres, shopping malls, what we actually found had happened once, purely by accident, was that we'd sold in trail and the contracts were signed and in the crossover of us acquiring that business we double booked a certain tour so one was supposed to, the same tour was supposed to go to the other side of the world and somewhere in the uk one contract came before the other one so we had to honor the contract that we had previously signed this came to light because the two businesses were working independently and once we'd integrated we kind of had a fully functioning integrated diary <music> sounds great until you get to the point where this one booking had had this crossover and the unfortunate client that we were not going to be able to honor was one of our earlier customers and they'd stuck with us and you want to do right by them but ultimately this other contract one had gone first, two was worth much, much more. And actually, they, it was for a customer on the other side of the world that had been with us from day dot. So the team, unbeknownst to me, were trying to come up with a plausible, valid, non-it-looks-like-we've-sold-out version of the truth. And that version of the truth would have been a lie. So they came to me and the, the client had gone mad. We told the client that the tour was double booked and that we could no longer give it them. Excuse me? Yeah. You can't be serious, man. You cannot be serious! And we would come back to them with the solution. The client understandably went crazy. Um, so the staff came to me and said, what do you think we should do? What would you like us to do? Or what would you suggest? And this elaborate tale that they were proposing, we spin, was so convincing, I half thought about it. Let, let's go with it. <laughs> But I thought, no, let's deal with this myself. Give me the name, give me the phone number, and I'll get on the phone to them. So I pick up the phone. They're not expecting a call from the chairman of the business, and they're, they're quite touched that we've taken it seriously. And I gave them a heartfelt apology. I told them exactly what had happened. I didn't dress it up. We'd acquired this company. We've integrated them, and in the process, we've sold the same tool twice. Being totally transparent, we've sold it for a lot more money for a lot longer period of time to someone on the other side of the world and we can't honour your booking. However, here are two or three viable options, two of which we'll give you an exclusive one. We will not give them to anyone else in the meantime so that at least you've got a marketing angle like you had with the tour that you'd hoped you'd booked and reframe everything that they'd done for the previous tour. And she was so taken aback with the honesty that it was for commercial reasons and that we'd just made a simple mistake that she's subsequently become one of our best repeating customers for the past two or three years. And I think it was such a simple lesson, but actually honesty and integrity is valued above all else. And actually from what started off as a car crash situation, you actually harness some of the best relationships. Another example I've got, and I don't mean it to be insensitive in this time where people are losing their jobs or being furloughed, but actually it was when I was troubleshooting going into companies that needed a radical overhaul and actually sadly having to either remove, compromise or make redundant collections of people um, while she kind of then reinvested, rebuilt the structure and then set off uh, on your way back to profit, which... I feel proud to say every single one of those projects I took on we moved into profit and huge growth but it doesn't mean it wasn't tough to begin with but I learned very quickly that honesty was the best policy. Explain your reasons why. 
we're doing this because the end goal is this and unfortunately we can't see how the job that you have fits in that. But actually there were certain scenarios where there was really challenging individuals that had stood by the company for years, had done great, but they'd essentially become institutionalised and bitter. They'd seen the ups, they'd seen the downs and fundamentally they were completely disillusioned with the company and this was just another example of change that was coming. And actually I sat down with a couple of these individuals and just said, ultimately here's the objective for this business, here's why I've been brought in. And it's just not possible for us to achieve our objectives with you in the business sadly. I know you're out there looking for work, you've made your displeasure with the company very very clear and whilst I may have only known you a month at this stage you're clearly not willing to give a new regime a chance and ultimately you won't believe it now but I think you'll maybe even thank me at some point with the decision that we're going to make today because today's unfortunately going to be where we call your service time and Obviously they weren't over the moon, but they respected my honesty and they were brave enough to admit that they were fed up. They'd spent so many years within the business and seen so much change that they almost couldn't see the wood for the trees anymore between the difference between good change and bad change. They thought that there was better out there, but they were fundamentally risk averse and just wanted to make sure the mortgage gets paid and who am I to judge that? But ultimately, in dealing them with, with that honesty, and I'm still in touch with with them actually to this day, and one I'd, I'd actually re-employed, um, said is one of the best things that ever happened to me because the settlement was handled with dignity. They were allowed to leave on their own terms, so to speak. They weren't out of pocket, and within a month, five weeks, they were back into work in something that they were finally excited about because it had been 10 years almost since they'd experienced something new. And they said, I know, I know at the time it probably didn't come across that way, but I really appreciate the fact that at least you told me the truth. You could have dressed it up as part of the restructure, but you were brave enough to be honest about why you'd made the decision. And there's obviously HR laws and things like that that you have to be compliant with as you deliver that news, but there's no... There's no law that tells you you can't tell the truth when you make tough decisions. And articulate these without distortion, uh, then, then, then what comes out is the truth and it's beautiful, even if it's terrible. In business, it's very, very easy to see how quickly a lie can escalate. And the best example I've got of that, and I don't want to get bogged down in the detail of this, but there's actually the recession in 2008 when the, essentially the markets crashed. And that started with one lie about people getting fixed rate mortgages that after two years they could no longer afford because they've been handing out loans and mortgages to people that couldn't afford to make the repayments. And actually no one was auditing them. Over 50% of those accounts had never even been looked at. And every time the lie was going to come to light. The lie got bigger and was fixed with another lie and another lie until ultimately the market crashed. Millions of people lost their homes, lost their pensions, have thousands and thousands of pounds worth of debt. And I'm not trying to deal in hyperbole here or trying to over-exaggerate the point. It's just, isn't it better to operate in the truth? Because the consequences of living lies, they send you under. So I think it's really, really easy thing to overlook in this day and age where I've got to get the best results, I've got to drive the most efficiencies, I've got to get the best profits. We're a publicly listed company, we've got to be showing year on year growth, the shareholders are expecting dividend payments. And actually all that pressure and angst leads people to think that sometimes the best thing they can do is lie whereas actually the best thing you can do is always deal in truth because truth can be understood lies will be found out and actually if the truth isn't what people want to hear that doesn't mean it's a reason not to say it and i think the most impactful managers and the most successful business people i've ever seen have always been the one that told you the truth even if it was painful to listen to, or even if what they were telling you might have been frightening at the time, they did it with your best interests and for the right reasons. The other part to that is the truth is always best delivered, even if the truth is that you don't know. 
I don't understand, I'll have to come back to you. Because the ramifications of pretending you know when you don't could be huge. And what's wrong with not knowing? Even if you should know, you're better to admit that you don't than to live the lie that you do. But everybody in a working environment knows the difference between wrong and right and dealing in the truth, I think, is the most impactful thing you can do in any profession. So that's it for today, as I say, I didn't mean to preach, but hopefully it's a useful video and I'll see you in the next one. Please like, please subscribe, as always, and uh, take care. See you later.